Gantarika Girijari, Radhika Raman, Radha Damanar Giriju, Ki Jai Ho. Om Agyana Timurandasya, Jananjana Salakaya, Chakshu and Militam Yena Tazmai Shri Gurave Namaha. Sri Chaitanya Manopistam, Stapitam Yena Bhutale, Swayam Rupa Kadamayam, Dadati Swa Padanti Kam. Namo Maha Vandanaya Krishna Prema Pradayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namne Gora Tavashay Namaha Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare First of all, I'd like to offer my heartfelt postpunctually to the lotus feet of my Hare Nam Diksha Guru, my Srila Prabhupada, Srila Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj who saved me from hell. Second of all, to my Bhajan Shiksha Guru, Srila Bhaktivedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj, my Guru Dave, who is trying to keep me on the path and help me serve Srila Prabhupada. Next, to Srila Bhakti Vigyan Bharati Goswami Maharaj, who has given so much wonderful association, and to Bhakti Vaibhav Puri Goswami Maharaj, who has sent me all my assistance, <laughs> and to all the assembled devotees. <laughs> So here we are with Sheila, um, with Sri Shikshastakam. And um, we're so fortunate. We're so fortunate, actually. We're speaking a little bit every day, each time, about actually the meditations for the times of day for each verse. And we're still on verse number two, which is Pratalila, which is about six in the morning till about 8.30 in the morning. 
like this. This is after the waking up pastimes. Now we're in the morning pastimes. Then today, hopefully, we'll move on into the third verse, which is uh, Purban Lila, which is from about 8.30 to about 10, 10.30, something like this, where Krishna's going off to, her, to graze the cows, right? So in the beginning of Pratalila, usually when we start chanting, we need to stop for a minute and not just pick up our beads and start chanting. We want to be in some kind of contemplative mood so that we can go deep into our chanting. And we should try and chant quality nam. Not just be concerned with, I'm supposed to chant 16 rounds, I'm supposed to chant one lakh, so here, let me get going. Blah, 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 blah. You know, like this. That's okay. That's better than not chanting, that's for sure. We should chant, 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 no matter what. But we will actually make more progress, and our dormant love for Krishna will awaken more quickly if we chant with the proper moods, like this. And so as we know in this first verse, the very, very first verse, Chaito Darpa and Marjanam, it was giving us the full spectrum of Srinam from beginning to end. It's cleansing the heart, and in the end we'll attain Prem, simply by the chanting by proper association and proper enthusiasm, we will attain prema simply by Srinam. That is incredible. Incredible. So before we start chanting, we just stop and contemplate how fortunate we are. We should contemplate Sri Guru. We should be grateful to our Guru Dave, who's a Rupanuga Gaudiya Vaishnava. We should think about who he actually is. And we should, you know, be grateful and we should be chanting for his pleasure. We should do everything for the pleasure of Sri Guru. And not only is a Rupanuga Gaudiya Vaishnava, he's a maidservant of Srimati Radhika. We should have this understanding like this. We should contemplate Sri Guru. And we shouldn't disobey him in any way. So that means we should try our utmost, as we talked about last time, to become free from the ten offenses. We should try and try, and when we find ourselves committing in any way, even slightly, the offenses, we should stop, we should beg forgiveness, and we should become more humble, and we should just beg for help, that these impurities in our heart that make us perform these uh, uh, offenses will be purified by the mercy of Sri Guru and the Vaishnavas. Because we're talking about an Arjunavriti. This is verse 2, isn't it? And how we're derdivum, we're very unfortunate. Because we don't really have a taste and an attraction for chanting. If we did, we'd be chanting 24 hours a day in ecstasy, and we'd be feeling all kinds of wonderful moods, which we're not. <laughs> At least I'm not, that's for sure. Every now and then I get some, uh, some mercy. Some mercy will come, so it shows, oh, this is what's possible. This is what will come. But no, and then it's retracted because I'm not really on that level, really. Because we're talking about Srinam. And Srinam is compared to, uh, and, and our, um, not just Srinam, but the process of bhakti is compared to a mango. You have an unripe mango and you have a ripe mango. It's always a mango. So you got the bhakti is bhakti. Nam is nam. But at the level of Shraddha is different than at the level of Prem. Prem is, a, is the uh, mature mango. The ripe one, way, wherever you taste it, it's just wonderful. And there's mangoes that exist that don't even have skins. They're so amazing that no matter what, what they're just full of rust. This is Prem. And as Prem even goes, becomes more and more and more ripe, then you've got Sneha, Maan, Prana, so many levels of Prem till we get the level, which is actually our inherent nature. Our inherent nature is, for us, as a maidservant of Shemati Radhika. That's who we are. And when we actually come to the level when our inherent nature is manifest, our swarup is manifest, and we go on maturing and maturing by association with the Brajabasi, especially for us, the other maidservants of Shemati Radhika, 
and we get further and further so training, training, and our boss and everything are maturing and becoming more and more manifest. Ultimately, we come to the lotus feet of Srimati Radharani and taste just a little bit of her prem, which is Mahabhav. Nobody else can taste this. Only the maidservants of Srimati Radharani. They don't give full, but they get some. That is our... Um, what do you, I, I don't know the word. I was, that is our um, aspiration. Aspiration, that's the word I'm looking for. So now we should be very careful because we should understand that it is very, very rare to get a human birth. This is one thing that most devotees and non-devotees, of course, do not take very seriously. The human form of birth is so rare. So rare. And we are, what, what does the scripture say, our acharyas say? And if we don't take it seriously, we are what? Mudha. Mudha means like, like a donkey, like really foolish, ignorant, wasting our human form of life. And it's so serious, we may not get another one for unlimited lifetimes. No matter how much service we're doing now, it is not guaranteed. And that is the example of Bharat Maharaj. He was so high level, he became a deer in his next life because he became attached to a deer. Even though he chanted, chanted, because he was like, oh, we hear if you take Mahaprasadam, you're going to get the birth of a, a human birth. If you do this, you're going to get a human birth. Well, what had he done? Bob Maharaj had done so much. So high level. Bob, he became a deer. Of course, this is Leela because he chose that. He chose it, but this is the to help us become more serious. And he was lucky as a deer. He remembered who he was and he was able to, in his neck burst, then he said, I'm not making these mistakes again. But we may not. If we don't get a human, and even if we get a human form of birth, what might happen? It's guaranteed, okay, you'll get a birth in a high, wealthy, you know, arist aristocratic family. Well, what if that family doesn't really teach you about bhakti? Then what? Then we become attached to sense gratification again, and we whirl down, 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 and we have, it'll be a long time before we get to come back, back, back. Even it says in the Srimad Bhagavatam that the demigods in heaven, when those that are like have a little bit more Sukriti, they are very, they're lamenting that they have taken birth in Swarga as demigods, and they realize that they misused their life as a human being, they misused it, and they're praying to be able to come back in Bart Varsh and take birth again so that they can practice devotional service and finish it up and go back home, back to Godhead. There is no more fortunate birth than a birth as a human being, especially in Bart Varsh. So those in Bart Varsh who misuse their, their form of human form of life, they're very, very, very unfortunate. And those of us who took birth not in Bart Varsh, but we're so lucky that the topmost Bart Varshis, you know, the Braj Basis, the Rupanuga Gaudiya Vaishas, have come. They come, they came to our Varsh. They came. Srila Prabhupada came. Srila Gurudev went. Srila Bhakti Bhai Bhapuri goes on. They went out, collecting us, saving us, picking us up, because we had a human form of life. They couldn't pick up the dogs. They couldn't pick up the cows, the trees. They could give them some mercy, but they couldn't teach them to, they couldn't enliven them to chant Hare Krishna. They couldn't awaken in their dormant Krishna consciousness because that's not what Krishna's plan is. But we, we have gotten this opportunity. So before we start chanting, we should take it seriously. And not only that, if we're really intelligent, we're trying to chant 24 hours a day in some form or another. You can be learning verses, you can be chanting kirtan, but we should be doing Hari Nam Sankirtan 24 hours a day. And myself, I can't do it when I'm sleeping because I'm not that advanced. So I personally have a, a, a Prabhupada singing all night. That's what I listen, at least I'm hearing it, <laughs> you know, because I'm a, a little bit serious. I should be more serious. But I'm a little bit serious about taking this human form of life seriously and trying to make this my last birth. Because Prabhupada had said, you know, finish your business up. Don't make me come back again. He's my guru. 
I should take that seriously. I shouldn't think, oh, I'm too full. Oh, it's going to take me so I can't possibly do it with, because I can't. But Prabhupada can do it for me. He can seriously do it for me. He can go like that and he can give me prem. But he will do it when he feels like it, when he wants it, when I've attracted that kind of mercy from him. So it's my responsibility to try and please him in all ways at all times. Every, not even a half a second should I not try and please him. Now, I'm not really on that platform, but I wish I was. At least I'm understanding that I want to be on that platform, and it is possible. It's not that it's impossible. When I say it's impossible, we all know what Prabhupada would say. Impossible is a words in a fool's dictionary. There we go, mudha again. Mudha. <laughs> Means we haven't taken proper sadhu sangha. And that's what we're talking about. This verse 2, nam nam akari bhada dijasara shaktis, is about sadhu sangha, bhajana kriya anartana vritti. So we have to take sadhu sangha very seriously. We have to not disobey them. We have to understand who they are fully. They're not just, you know, part of Mahaprabhu's Sankirtan movement. They are the maidservants of Srimati Radharani, who is Mahabha Swarupini. She's the Swarup Shakti. Tatmo Shakti. She is the Shakti of Krishna. And they are her maids. They also have this kind of Shakti. They keep Krishna under control. He's their maidservant, actually. <laughs> you know, like this. So if we understand who our guru is, and then we take their instructions to our heart. And we try to the best of our ability to follow them. And when we see we can't, we pray to be empowered to be able to follow, to follow them better, more, with more affection, more gratitude. And it, what is that? Bhagavad Gita says, joyously. Joyously. So what does that mean? That means when all of the, um, what we do to our false ego and our imperfect senses, our tendency to be cheating and, you know, all the, the four um, cheating, mistakes, imperfect senses. What was the other one? Illusion. Illusion, yeah, whatever it is. Yeah, we have, we have our, you know, our, our coverings, our coverings like this. So even when we perceive, oh, this is not favorable, Oh, this horrible thing is happening. If we really take our Gurudev's instructions to heart, we'll see, oh, actually, it's favorable. It is favorable. We will try and change our complete consciousness to understand this is coming to me because of Guru and Krishna's desire. And they cannot be anything but auspicious. They are sending this to me, either as a lesson, as a test, as a token punishment for what I've done in the past, for whatever reason, or to show the world how tolerant my devotees are. <clears throat> you look at Haridas Thakur. He didn't have anything he needed to be have token punishment for. He, he, nothing. But Lord Chaitanya wanted to show how exalted his devotee was. Like this. And he himself, he's so humble. He's thinking, oh no, because I heard some blasphemy of the holy name. This is when he was in Raghunath Das Goswami's father's assembly, and he heard this one Brahmin kind of blaspheming the holy name. He said, I heard it, so there, I deserve all this. I'm an offender because I heard blasphemy of the holy name. This is, so the, we need to take it seriously and try to at least preach to ourselves and get to understand that our consciousness is not coming up to the standard of a devotee, actually, even. It's not. It's not coming up. When we think, oh, how could this happen to me? Why is this happening to me? Like this. Now, we should, think, we should stop and think, my sweet Lord, isn't it? We were all attracted, most of us, by the Beatles. My sweet Lord, George Harrison, my sweet Lord. So when are we going to stop and think, Everything is coming to you because of my sweet Lord. He's smiling right there. He's doing this. You know, when are we going to think, oh, this is coming because of my sweet Lord. Let me accept it joyfully. The other example, Prahlad Maharaj. He never got angry at his father. Never. Look what his father was doing to him. 
we get nothing compared to what Prahlad Maharaj got or Hari Das Thakur, of course, have the same personalities, but, you know, nothing. And we're still thinking, oh, how could this happen to me? I'm such a nice, yeah, but, you know, so many things. I've never done anything like that to deserve this. <laughs> or, uh, you know, whatever it is, we start thinking. But when we finally get fixed, then we'll be able to come to actually verse three. Trinada pi suni chena, tarora pi suhis, amani na manadena, kirtaniya sadahari. Because by that time, this is a level of nishta. And in nishta, everything is there that came before. Because everything's just maturing. You had that mango that's maturing. So shredda is there, but shredda is maturing. Sadhu sangha is maturing. Bhav, uh, Bhajan is maturing. Anartas are being removed. They aren't completely gone in Nishta. They're still, but they don't, they're what you call latent. In Nishta, they're latent. They don't really disturb you so much. So when we finally surrender to Sri Guru and Garanga and Radha and Krishna, then we'll come to the stage of Nishta, you see, which is the Anartas are just, they're latent because why? Because we finally, finally starting to become humble. It's a trinata peace in each other. We feel ourselves more fallen, more low than a blade of grass or a piece of straw that's trampled on the street. We finally start to feel that. Won't that be a relief? That will be such a relief, really. Because right now, how could they do that to me? Oh, you know, the ego, the ego is, you know, or how could, you know, you know, it's because that's the way we're raised. That's our conditioning, especially from the Western world. But even you see now in India, not being raised so humble anymore, like this. Especially in India, there's a lot of the bully system. It's all over the world, too. I have, though, met, it's very interesting, because when I was in uh, ISKCON, Los Angeles, I did meet one personality. He was a Mexican, uh, he, he had a Mexican body, but he was raised Catholic. And he had a most amazing upbringing, actually. His whole family became devotees of Krishna. He was so humble. He had been taught to think, I am your servant, I'm the servant of, no, I'm the servant of God, I am your servant. Amazing. So it isn't just in Hindu, you know, in, in the, but he, he was born in Mexico, Catholic, like this, you know? How, how, when do we think, I am the servant of my guru? I'm the servant of Mahaprabhu. I am your servant. Mostly we're thinking, wait a minute, you should be serving me. <laughs> You're not serving me. Sorry, <laughs> Bob. No, I am your servant. How can I serve you? Like this. When, oh, when, oh, when will this consciousness go? We're praying, please, Gurudev, please, Prabhupada. Please cleanse away this false ego. And what is this false ego? What is this Trinatopi? It comes from, uh, let's see, how do they say it? It comes from, uh, uh, it's here. It comes from the attitude that um, ah, natural detachment from material sense gratification. So we have to, because at least at our stage, we have to try and consciously become detached from sense gratification. We have to make the choice, you know? We have to make choices. We have to start to wake up. Like when our Mahaprasadam is before us. We have to can stop, stop. Of course, maybe you all do. I don't always, so I'm talking to myself. Stop, this is Mahaprasadam from my Gantharvika Giritari, coming down through my Gurudev. It's their mercy. This is, I'm so fortunate to have this Mahaprasad. It's completely pure. It can give me prem. And we pray, and we try and honor the Mahaprasad while thinking of the pastimes of Guru Garanga like this. Fully, fully serving Mahaprasad. Instead of, oh my 
God, look at that cheesecake. Whoa, that strawberry cheesecake. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait a minute. He got blueberries. Mm, why didn't I get some of the, you know, whatever could come up, you know, <laughs> Harry Bo. <laughs> All right, wait a minute. I'm just, you know, I have a diet. I can't take that. Why do the cooks put that in there? We're not, I can't take chilies. They're just a bunch of, they chill it. So many, I've heard so many different comments by devotees and myself that are actually uh, offensive to Mahaprasadam and very foolish, makes us mutas, and uh, are not very helpful to our progressive path in bhakti. And the, the, two of the most important uh, 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 mercies that were given by Sri Guru is Sadhu Sangha, ho chanting the holy name in Mahaprasada. As the Prabhupada's weapons were, the holy name in Mahaprasada. His weapons, he changed the whole world by Mahaprasada and Mahaprasada. Uh, Mahaprasada and Maha Mantra, <laughs> you know, like this. So we should be very grateful. We're human beings. We have the ability to discern. We have the ability to put sense gratification over here. Not to choose Maya, but to choose Krishna. Save it to Krishna. So at our point, I'm still back in verse 2, is we have to start to discriminate and start to really control our uncontrolled mind. Our mind is our worst enemy. It's full of past bad habits and past samskars. And even I know for myself, I'll be thinking, oh, the mom puts on me, and I'll, I'll be thinking, oh, I'm gonna, today I'm really going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, and I say prayers, you know, Mahaprasad. And then there's one that uh, Gurudev told Shamarani we could uh, say it's Prema uh, uh No, it starts Prema Danchame, Kama Danchame, Veda Danchame, Vai Bhavanchame, Jiva Danchame, Jiva Tanchame, Daiva Danchame, Na Param. It's from Bilva Mangala Thakur's Krishna Karnamrita. And so sometimes I get really excited and I do that. But then as soon as I, I realize, personally, I sometimes I put on a, a, a harikata. Because if not, I'm, I'm doing really good. Then all of a sudden I realize I've gone off to whatever in South America or Russia or, or whatever, or my foot or what. You know, the mind has just gone boom, boom, boom. And it, it, you know, like this. And Gurudev explained what our problem is, especially for us, that we're not born in high-class families. Because those born in India have a lot of the same problems, because even though they're born in Bart Varsh, many times they were not born in very high-class families and devotional families. Although it's a better birth, it definitely is a better birth. But for all of us, pretty much, we need help. We need help. You know, so Gurudev, he has explained in one lecture he gave in Mathura about Sadhu Sangha. He explained that uh, those born, especially not in India, it's in our blood. We actually have in our blood our samskars. You know, either we were meat eaters, most of us, doing all kinds of things we shouldn't do as human beings. So we have to be very patient very patient with ourselves and with others, because it will take time. But those who are born with bhakti in their family, or even in Bart Varsh, because even if your family wasn't, there's just something about Bart Varsh. It's a special birth. There is bhakti in the blood. And it's true. It's true, because everywhere are deities. Everywhere you see, no matter South India, North India, because in Bart Varsh, there's Takarjis everywhere. And there's some form of devotion, might be to Ganesh, might be to Shiva, it might be to whatever, not always to Krishna or Ram like this, but there is devotion there, and they're taught some devotion. I have a god sister who came to India uh, with her mother a few years ago. Her mother is like a yogi, but not more like impersonal. Now she's becoming a devotee because she read Radhanath Swami's book and she liked it. She's 80, 90 years old. And the, at that time she was 80 something. She came to India and we were going on Parikama, all of us. 
And I was sitting beside her, so what's your impression of India? She said, after just driving around and being here and, you know, whatever, she says, I can see everyone here has made God the center of their life. She could see it. She could feel it. And she hadn't just been in Vrindavan. She'd been in Delhi. She'd been here and there, you know. But now that we've come to this path, we should take, we've also been born now. We've been reborn. We've been born by mantra, you know. Prabhupada said even in the West, his temple in New York is what he first said it. Now you're living in Vaikuntha. Vaikuntha, my temples are Vaikuntha. They're not just Vaikuntha, they're Vrindavan. There's Radha and Krishna there. You know? So bhakti is starting to flow in our blood a little bit, you know, like this. But we have to be very patient. But we don't want to waste time. Because we don't want to think, well, okay, I was, it's going to take me a few lifetimes. No. The purification process can go quite quickly, actually, with the kind of the gurus, the Vaishnavas, the sadhu sangha that we have. If we hear their harikata, don't let it go like this. It has to go and into the brain, into the mind, into the intelligence. We have to control the uncontrolled mind with our spiritual intelligence, which is the words coming from Sri Guru and the Vaishnavas. That can be the Bhagavatam. It can be the Harikata we just sat in when we went to Harikata with our Gurudev or with the Vaishnavas. But we have to take it seriously. We have to actually apply it. If we apply it, very quickly the purification process can happen if we want it. Everything is based on desire. The life of bhajan is utsaha, enthusiasm, eagerness, desire. Yes, yes, I want this prem. I want it. I want prem. And not just for my satisfaction. I want it because that's going to make the one who saved me, the one who took me out of hell, the one who's given me happiness in my life. I was miserable. I was covered with darkness. I was suffering so much. And Prabhupada picked me up and he's given me happiness. He's given me everything. So for his pleasure, let me want to attain what he wants to give me. Let me become qualified to receive what he's giving me. What he wants, he wants me to become a ripe mango. <laughs> so he can take me and, mm, oh, that tastes really good. <laughs> you know? That will be his greatest pleasure. That will be my pleasure. You see what I mean? But if I'm just doing it for my own pleasure, then it won't even happen. <laughs> it won't happen. You see? So we have to give up this desire for it. Then this humility will manifest. And then after that, we have, uh, oh yes, we have more tolerant than a tree. And that comes from, that means we pure compassion comes. And how can that come? When we're devoid of envy. So no lust, no envy. The trees, they give the example. They give the example of tolerance, compassion, giving. No matter what the weather is, they don't complain at all. They don't complain. It can be very, very hot, very cold. They're standing there. And what's happening? They're giving. They give their shade. They give shelter. They give their fruits. They give their leaves. They give everything, isn't it? And even if they're going to be cut down, they'll still give to the person who's coming to cut them down. Freedom from false ego, like this. Then comes purity of heart when we're free from the false ego. Purity of a false ego. No, I am your servant. I'm the servant of God. I'm a spirit soul. So giving respect. And what's the last one? The last one is? Oh, yeah. So in giving respects to everyone, According to their, uh, what do you call it? Their their uh, their qualification or their respective positions, but that means to everyone, because Prabhupada, everyone's pointed out because Krishna is resting in everyone's heart, even the most heinous criminal, even the worst, even Aparadi, Krishna's still there, and there's still a spirit soul, so we respect him in that way. 
not for what their conditioning is, not for what their material body is, or even their uh, subtle body, but for who they really are and who's with them. Like this. What to speak of a pure devotee who's inside and out, 100% praying, you might say, brudge praying. Like this. Like this. Full respect. Serving them with love and affection. So when we come to this position, then we'll be able to do what? Kirtaniya Sadahari. Always chanting. Always chanting. You know? Oh. And it's very amazing because in the songs of Bhakti Vinod Thakur, I think it's not for it. It's, I, uh, yeah, it's for the third time of the day, I think it is. Maybe it's the night. No, I think it's this one. He's even saying, this is his humility. He is our, our Adi, Adi, Adi guru, you know. We're in the Bhakti Vinod Dada. We're so fortunate to become in the line of Bhakti Vinod Thakur. Kamala Manjari, he's given so much. So what does he say? He says, I just pray that this unconditional love, these bobs, this manifests in my heart, you know, and it only keeps increasing, even if I have to go to hell. No matter what body I have to take due to my past karma, may I just always be glorifying your name, fame, and may the qualities be, may kirtan, may nam always be manifest from my heart and on my lips. He doesn't even pray not to have to take another birth again. He doesn't. But may I always, always remember you and always glorify you. Like this. And that means that he, even if, let's say, the body had to go to hell, they don't go to hell because if you're always remembering Krishna and glorifying Krishna, you can't be in hell. It's not possible. You won't be able to be tortured. It won't be possible. Just like Haridas Thakur. He, they couldn't, they just couldn't torture him. Or Prahlad, it's not possible. You see? Because it's a consciousness. We're not the body. Either gross or subtle. We're a spirit soul. The spirit soul cannot be harmed in any way. The spirit soul is sat, chit, ananda. Always joyful. Always joyful. So you can see our mistake is that we're committing the tenth offense to the holy name all the time, thinking I am the body, everything related to the body is me, and every happening to the body is me, and I'm miserable. Me, 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 the body. Instead of I am the spirit soul, this is all temporary, let's just tolerate what's happening, you know, like this. That's the tenth offense to the holy name. So when we really start to really, at least with by our spiritual intelligence, the spiritual intelligence, we may not have realized we're the soul. That comes in Bhav, really, or more in Ruchi or Shakti. But at our level, Sadhu Sangha, now we're moving into Nishta, with our spiritual intelligence, when these things come up and when we finally can come out of whatever we're in, wait a minute, I'm not this body, I'm a spirit soul. I'm separate from this. This has nothing to do with me. I am, see, this is what basic. This is why Srila Prabhupada, even though people say, some people say, oh, he just got so low level. You know, it's just so, you know, and everyone else is giving so much high. But actually, he was giving, I am a spirit soul. Spirit, he was giving so much high, high understanding. What is higher than to understand your spirit soul? <laughs> That's like, you know, <laughs> There is nothing beyond that, actually. And he even would say that um, he, he gave us Radha and Krishna. He would say, back home, back to Godhead, back to Vrindavan. So he would say, actually, a spirit soul, you're a bridge bussy. Like this. He was giving such a high, high, high conception of who we are and what our goal is. It was, he gave absolutely everything. But in our state, because they're so covered by ignorance, we couldn't appreciate and couldn't realize so much. I remember myself, because <laughs> I just couldn't understand. I was so covered by so much ignorance. I'd done so many things that a human being shouldn't do. Uh, <laughs> so I, I read Krishna book, right? And, uh, and I thought, oh, I just love Vrindavan. 
But I didn't, I was so upset, as most everyone was, that Krishna left Vrindavan and he went away and he got married and he never came back again. I thought that was so cruel, so horrible. I didn't, I wanted to go to Vrindavan. I mean, who wanted to go there? You just suffer, you know, for, what's this? It sounds horrible, you know? Because <laughs> we hadn't really had, we didn't have the concept of uh, Nitya Lila yet really so much, even though Prabhupada would say it's eternally going on, we just didn't quite have that. And he even mentioned Nasakali Alila in one of the purports in Nectar of Instruction. But we just didn't have the concept yet. <laughs> so I remember when Prabhupada, he published his uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita. And in the Majalila, when he's talking about the books of Rupa Goswami, Sadat Goswami, Jiva Goswami, and he mentions Jiva Goswami's Gopal Champu. And I don't know if you know, but in that purport, he lists every single chapter of the Gopal Champu, every single one. So I was so relieved because one of the chapters is Radha and Krishna get married. I thought, wow, okay, okay, maybe I can handle this. You know, it's not forever. Oh my gosh, this sounds good. And I think another chapter is they return to Vrindavan or whatever it was, you know. So you can see, even though some people criticize Jiva Goswami, for this preaching some swaki above, he, this was his part of the mission for those who are not qualified, you know, to understand higher things. Even I was part of that. Of course, as soon as I developed, then of course I, we came to a higher understanding. But uh, it was definitely a, a very, very favorable thing for me at one time, you know. So as we progress, we progress, then... Uh, why was I saying that? <laughs> what was I talking about? I got lost in that one. <laughs> what was I even talking about? Anyhow, can't remember why I said that. Anyhow, where are we? So let's come back to... Uh, hmm. huh. Anyhow, we're here in chanting the holy name. <laughs> uh, I can't remember why I said that. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Maybe it was because of um, how the consciousness evolves. Can't remember. Oh, that's what it was. That's right. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, I was speaking about how Prabhupada. He, he gave us everything. So, oh, what I was, I, I kind of diverted. Before when I first started class, I was really trying, wanted to talk about how before we start chanting, because we're all, now, we're Shikshasya, all about chanting, which is our life, our life and soul. Because Prabhupada, as you know, he said before he came to the West, he said, I'll even let them eat meat if they just chant Hare Krishna. Because I know if chanting Hare Krishna, they'll give that up easily. Now he didn't have to do that. So even before Mahaprasadam, he was willing to give Harinam, you know. So we should take it very seriously. And before we chant, now if one is living in the Mat, or even in ISKCON, when I joined ISKCON, we had a program, you know. We had a program. And so by the time we were starting to chant, our mind was in a, a mood, a proper mood for chanting. So if we live alone and we don't have, you know, this kind of atmosphere, we have to, we have to produce that in our homes, in our rooms. We have to make our homes, our bhajan kutir, you know. We should have every day, no matter who we are, mangalartik every day, no matter what time you get up. Let's say you have to work night shift and you have to give up who knows what time. Or even if you're just the kind of person you can't get, you get up late and you get up, I mean, you go to bed late and you get up late. The point is we need to have Mangalarti. And if we cannot have it at the proper time of day, we should still have Mangalarti. It makes our day Mangal, auspicious. But it's not just for us. It pleases Sri Guru. It pleases Guru and pleases Radha and Krishna. So even if you take two minutes with one stick of incense, better you do it longer, but you do something. You have a picture, you know? If not, at least in your mind, you do Mangalartik. If you can't sing all the songs, sing Hare Krishna. 
but you do Mangal Arti, and you do Tulsi worship. You worship Tulsi. In Iskar, we did that. Gaudi Amat, we did. This is preparing us to be able to properly chant. You know, and you may have some prayers you say. That's your own personal thing. You know, in Iskar, we had uh, Samsar Davan, we had uh, Tulsi prayers, we had the Shringa prayers, and we had Shikshashtakam, and then we had two hours of chanting. Then we had Guru Puja, Shiva Bhagavatam class, etc., etc. Guru Gaudiya Mat, they have their way of doing it. But we also have to have a program. It's not that we just are haphazard in our life. That is not bhajan. Bhajan means you have a process, a process, a program for following the instructions of the guru and making the guru's instructions your life and soul. So you have a process. He gives it, actually. He says, Mangalartik, you know, kirtan, chanting, whatever it is. Even if you have to work. Hopefully, you, that's why you may have not much time in the morning. You quickly, very quickly, you can learn to do things in five minutes. You can if you have to. You have to quickly, when you get up, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, do quickly, get your mind, Guru, Garanga. Okay, you know, you have to immediately get that mind and put it in place and very quickly, you know, learn to uh, kind of condense all the Jayadwani prayers, everything, you know, like this. It can be done. It can be done. And then you're in the proper consciousness that goes through your whole day in an auspicious way. Even if you have to go to work, even if you have children and it's really hard, or you have a husband or a wife that's very difficult, or, or you live in a place where everyone's uh, meat-eating and, and opposed to Krishna consciousness, because there's so many devotees all over the world. But the beginning of our day is so important, and we should chant at least something every morning with some trying to chant with quality, not just worried about, oh, I have to chant at least, and our minds are going, oh, no, no, what? There's, there's fog out there. How, how am I going to get there? No. We just put it all over there, understand our sweet Lord is going to take care of everything. But we need to please him, and that means him means all of his, you know, the guru, everyone. We, so let me at least chant, try and chant one, try and chant something. Even if it will give yourself a time, whatever you have, try and go deep. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram. And try like this. And the more we have time for that, the better. So we're hoping, oh, when, oh, when will that day come? When I can become completely absorbed in pleasing, in pleasing Sri Nam. In serving Sri Nam, in serving Sri Guru and the Vaishnavas Garanga. When will my Nam become pure, free from offense, not Nam Apara, not even Nam Abbas, Sudha Nam, but not even Sudha Nam, Prema Nam. When will it come? Desiring and being eager, because this eagerness is the life of bhajan. And it's the goal. So then we can, and we think, and then we say, you can think. It, the mind, as long as it's Krishna conscious, you can even think about the tattva. Okay, when am I going to become free from envy? Oh my gosh, and this, you know, like this. Or you can think about, oh wow, this is, uh, we're talking about what we're talking about. We're still in Prata Leela going into Purban Leela. Oh, Srimati Radhika. At around 8 o'clock, more or less, what happens? Kundalata is sent by Mother Yashoda to bring Srimati Radhika to Nandagram to cook for Krishna. Now, this is actually astonishing. This can only happen in Braj. It can only happen by Yashoda, who is topmost Vatsalya Bhav. Why? Because it is unheard of that someone like Yashoda would call for someone who's a newly married bride, to, not her son, but to someone else to come to her house and cook. That is not acceptable. This is not acceptable behavior. You do not call for a young lady who's just gotten married to come over to your house and cook for your son and everyone. You don't do that. That's not acceptable etiquette. 
But her praying is so high, she disregards all this because she knows that Srimati Radhika has a boon from Durvasa Muni, that, uh, that whatever she cooks will make the person healthy, will make him so uh, happy, so many, I forgot what all the benedictions were, but mainly it will make him healthy, live long life, like this. So she disregards everything. Not only that, her bob is so high, she just considers her like her own daughter or like her daughter-in-law, depending on the situation. Her moods are so high. This is, we're talking about Brudge, which is the land of bob and praying. It's not the land of Maryada. That's Ayodhya or Dorka. Vrindavan is a land of Bob and Prem. And Mother Yashoda's Bob is so high that she actually calls. And she knows that Jatila, the mother-in-law of Srimati Radhika, is a bit miserly, doesn't want her, her uh, daughter-in-law to go. And she's a bit envious. She says, who does Yashoda think she is? She thinks she's better than me. I'm also blah, 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 you know, <laughs> important. So Mother Yasoda is very smart. She sends a lot of gifts and things, you know, gold and clothes and different things to Jatila. You know, plus Yoga Maya, Purnamasi, knows how to make everything perfect. So she comes to Jatila, I mean, yeah, Jatila, and she said, Jatila's complaining to Purnamasi. Yasoda thinks she's a queen, and she's calling, she says, I am not going to send my daughter-in-law. No way. So Purnamasi says, I know past, present, and future. I know everything. Well, I have seen that if you don't send your daughter-in-law, your son will die. All the cows will die. It will be only misfortune for you all. And everyone worships Purnamasi. Everyone takes her word seriously. So Jatila has to reconsider. Okay. I guess I'm going to have to send my daughter-in-law. But she doesn't trust anybody, but for, by the arrangement of Purnamasi, she trusts Kundalata. Somehow or other, she trusts Kundalata, who is like Krishna's Babi. That means his older brother's wife. And it's not Balaram's wife, but it's Subhadra's wife, who is the son of Nanda Baba's oldest brother, Upananda. So Upananda's son is Subhadra, and his wife is Kundalata. So she's older than Krishna, and she's, like, respectable. So somehow or other, Jatila trusts her. Okay? Trust that, okay, I can send my, my daughter-in-law with Kundalata. And when Kundalata comes from uh, Nandagram, she's talking with Yashoda. She, I mean, with Jatila. She doesn't go straight to Radharani. She goes to Jatila. And she appeases her... And Jatila says, okay, you have to just make sure that she doesn't get, even get the shadow of that, and she won't even say it, of that black snake over there. You know, you just have to, you have to promise me that you're going to take her there and bring her back, and everything's going to be okay. And Kundala says, yes, 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 yes. But Kundala is, coach, no, she's part of everything. So <laughs> uh, Kundala then goes to uh, Srimati Radhika, and they start off for Nandagram, right? This time, of, not this time, but I mean at that time of day. And then they pass through uh, Terakadamba, right? Terakadamba. And there's so many amazing pastimes in Terakadamba before she even goes to Nandagram. And that's why Rupa Goswami and Sanat and Goswami made their bhajan kutras at this place. There's ones at Pavansrova, ones in Terry, they're so close. It's because so many astonishing pastimes happen with Shimati Radharani and her sakis before they even come to Nandagram. In some of the uh, Acharya's writings, it says sometimes they even have holy. They even have holy there in Terakadam before they even get there. They're having so much. And if you think about it, that's pretty amazing because they'd have to really clean up before they get to Nandagram. So, <laughs> of course, time is different there. Time can be expanded and condensed. <laughs> so before they even get to Nandagram, Sometimes Krishna, the Sakis Radharani is going along, and Lalita and Visakha, don't go that way. We know that rascal's over there. He's just waiting to do something. But Radharani says, I'm, I'm not afraid. We'll just go that way. So they go that way. And of course, you know, Krishna will take the udder of a cow and squirt milk right in Radharani's face and cover her with milk, and everyone's laughing and having a good time. So many pastimes. 
But then they go on to Nandagram, and Danish just waiting. Actually, Krish is, he's, he's so quick. He's also, he's left Terakadam and already gone up to Nandagram, and he's also waiting outside for them to come, watching them as they come, and they're a bit shy. And Denise takes Radharani and the Sakis in, and um, <clears throat> they meet with Ishodamai. And they're so respectful. They fall at her feet. But she loves them so much, she catches them and gives them an embrace. And they go into the kitchen like this. Yashoda's there, and they all start cooking like this. And then there's so many pastimes that happen. I think we'll stop here. <laughs> <laughs> So many more pastimes are going on. And what's happening with Mahaprabhu at this time? Mahaprabhu is just is just remembering all these pastimes. Remembering all the pastimes that are going on. And he's having kirtan. Kirtan and Harikata with his devotees in Goloka Svetadweep. Like this, Goloka Navadweep. Like this. So we remember these things. This is what Harinam will bring us, and Harinam will bring us not just memory. Harinam eventually, when we really surrender, when we really pray for, and we're eager and eager, will give us our siddhadeya, will manifest who we are, give us the bobs and the praying, and allow us entrance into these leelas. We won't just be hearing them, and, and, and you might say enjoying them. We will enter in, and we will serve in the pastimes. That is the ultimate goal. Seva Amrita. Prem Seva. Within the pastimes. Serving Srimati Radhika. Helping her and her Seva to Krishna. This is the goal. So it's very important that we come to Trinada pi suni chena, tadoda pi suhi, manina manadena kirtaniya sadahari. If we don't have that, that's part of praying. As we know, as much humility you have, that's how much praying you have. How much praying? So, okay, vancha kalpatubhishta, kripa sindhu bibhita, patitanam pavanabio, vaishnavabio, namo namaha. <laughs> Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Adaita Gadada Shri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Adaita Gadada Shri Vasadi Gora Bhakta I just thought of one thing I meant to say, and this is, why is it that <clears throat> until we become utterly selfless, will we never get praying? See, we won't be able to serve properly without selflessness. It won't be possible. There's an example, I can't remember if it was the Krishna Bhavanam Rita, the Govinda Lila Rita, when Shidmati Radhika is going to, uh, for the Majan Lila, going from her house in, in Javad to Radhakum on the pretext of doing Surya Puja, right? Jatila, so she has to do Surya Puja. And they first go to the Surya temple, then they go off. Well, when they go to the Surya temple, what happens there? Some of the Sakis have to stay there. They stay there and kind of guard the temple and take care of the paraphernalia and everyone else, Srimati Radha, and everyone goes on to Radha Kun. So if we're asked to stay at the Surya Kun, are we going to feel, oh, no, I'm missing out, oh, no. 
You see, that's not possible. It's not possible to be a proper sake, <laughs> manjari, if one is going to want his own desires. One is going to be happy no matter what Srimati Radhika asks us to do or Lalita or Vishaka asks us to do. We'll be very happy. And we will just feel overwhelmingly, uh, you know, like, yes, yes, like this. So we have to understand this. It's not that we'll always be right there. Sometimes, like, uh, we'll be asked to stay in Javad and not you know, like this. Because there's so many savas to do like this. But we're happy doing whatever savas it is, no matter how small and insignificant. Okay. <laughs> Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Jaya Gandhari Kadiri Dari Gandhari Kadiri Dari Rade. Naya Gandharvika Giri Dari Gandharvika Giri Dari Rade Jaya Radhika Raman 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 Jaya Giri Raja Jaya Govardhana Jaya Giri Raja Jaya Govardhana Giri Raja Jaya Govardhana Jaya Jaya Guru Dev Guru Dev Guru Dev Jaya Jaya Guru Dev Jaya Jaya Prabhu Pa Prabhu Pa Prabhu Pa Jaya Jaya Prabhu Pa Hari Bo 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 Jai Nitai Gaur Haribo.